From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. It's Lola Chase, Johnny. Hang up, Dollar. Johnny, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, but right now I can think of a lot of places I'd rather be. I said hang up. Johnny, there's someone there with you. Look, Dollar. Is it Tom? It is Tom, isn't it? I'm coming over. No, don't do it. I'm coming over. Stay away, Lola. He has a gun and he means business. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Barbados, British West Indies. To the Home Office, Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> item 28. Well, along about then, I figured this item would be around 200 bucks, burial expenses for me. Tom Chase was desperate, tired of running, and ready to take me off his trail for keeps. But Lola Chase's phone call to me seemed to have a strange effect on him. That was my wife, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was Lola. Why'd you drag her into this dollar? I didn't, Chase. She insisted on coming here to Barbados herself. Why couldn't she stay out of it? I suppose because she's your wife. That's all over. Yeah, I figured that when I found out it was a woman who arranged your hideout in New Orleans. That's all over, too. Turned sour, huh? Real sour. There's nothing left for me. Wait a minute, look, Chase. There's only one thing for you to do. Turn yourself in. Turn over what's left of the money it's and you'll It's too be... late for that, Dollar. There's only one thing left. Wait a minute. Killing me is not going to do any good, Chase. Somebody else will take over and keep after you until they get you. And they will get you sooner or later. You can count on it. I know. They'll keep coming after me. I can't run anymore, Dollar. I won't take it anymore from you or anybody. I just won't take it. Oh. <laughs> I never thought I'd be glad to get hit on the head. But just before I blacked out, I remember being very happy that it wasn't the bullet in the back I'd been expecting. I don't know how long I was out, but when I came to, Lola Chase and George Everson were bending over me. Are you all right, Johnny? Uh, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Oh, brother, my head feels like it was on a pogo stick. What happened, Mr. Dollar? Chase was waiting for me here in my hotel room with a gun. Why did he come here? For a very good reason. To take me off his trail for keeps. Oh, no. Oh, yes. But when you phoned, Lola, it seemed a time of a knot to learn that you were here in Barbados. He started talking wildly. Mr. Dollar, Lola and I'd still like to try the plan I mentioned to you earlier. Oh, look, Mr. Robinson. No, 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 hear me out. If we could just talk You'd be wasting your breath, Everson. Tom Chase is not about to turn himself in now or ever. I still don't get it, though. Get what? Why he didn't kill me just now. And why he didn't kill me before in the waterfront warehouse or on Lagos Island. He had plenty of chances. It's almost as if... Yes? Ah, skip it. Everson, suppose you take Lola back to her hotel. I'm going to check with Police Inspector Whitsitt. From what you tell me, Mr. Dollar, I'd say Chase was just about at the breaking point. Yeah, That's why we've got to track him down fast before he loses his head completely. Well, we're continuing our check of hotels and rooming houses. I don't think there's anything else we can do for the moment. Excuse me. What's that here? Yes, in just a moment. For you, Mr. Donner. Oh, thanks. Hello? It's Lola, Johnny. He was just here. Chase, where? Here at my hotel cottage. Please come quickly, Johnny. I'll be there in ten minutes. I made it in eight. Lola was still trembling. It was horrible. He was talking wild, crazy. You see which way he went? Yes. I got to the window in time to see him drive off toward the mountain. Johnny, we've got to find him. He's out of his mind. We piled into the car and took off after Chase up a twisting, steep mountain road. (sighs) Tell me what happened, Lola. What'd he say? I've never seen him like that before, Johnny. He's sick. The things he said... Like what? That it was all over. There was nothing left for him. That he just wanted to see me once more before... Before what? He didn't say, but... 
Oh, hurry, Johnny. We can't take these turns any faster. I begged him to turn himself in. He said he wished he could, for my sake. But that he couldn't. Look, Lola, maybe he just took this route to cross the island. The way he was talking, Johnny. I don't think he was trying to get across the island. He... Wait a minute, hold it. Look, up ahead. That's the car he was driving. Parked beside the road. Next to a cliff, Johnny. Yeah. All right, Lola. You'd better stay right here in the car. Yes, I... I guess I'd rather. I walked to the edge of the cliff and looked down. His body was crumbled up on the rocks below. I climbed down. He was dead, all smashed up. It wasn't pretty. I climbed back to my car. Lola just looked at me with the big question in her eyes. All I did was nod. All she did was slump over on the seat. I drove her back to her hotel and phoned Inspector Whitsett. Then I went back to my hotel. Expense account item 29, $3. Drinks for me. I thought about a lot of things. About Tom Chase, who'd had everything in his favor back in New York, but who'd embezzled 120000 Had killed a man in New Orleans for trying to turn him in, but who hadn't killed me for trying the same thing and who ended up at the bottom of a cliff in Barbados. I thought about Lola, who'd come a long way for nothing except the final heartache. And I thought about me, who'd also come a long way for nothing, period. The next day, I dropped in on Inspector Whitsett at police headquarters. Well, Dollar, I've missed you. I, uh, I sort of took time out for a while, Inspector. I don't wonder. Yeah. Mrs. Chase, of course, identified the body. The inquest was this morning. Verdict suicide. Burials this afternoon. Here in Barbados? At first, Mrs. Chase wanted to take the body back to New York, but Mr. Everson felt that that would just be adding another painful experience to those she'd already been through. Oh. Yeah. Well, I still don't have the money Chase embezzled, Inspector. No, and offhand, I'd say your chances of finding it were not too good. Did you find anything at all in Chase's pockets that might give me a lead? Oh, just the usual. Loose change, his wallet, cigarettes, some matches, a comb. Book matches? Yeah. From a waterfront bar. Well, let me see him, Inspector. Hmm. It's not much, but it's the only thing I've got to go on. I went down to the waterfront bar named on the match folder and started combing the neighborhood. I checked every hotel and rooming house. Three hours later, I was about ready to give up. And then I found it. Yep. Chase's last hideout. I searched his room, but the money wasn't there. I went back to the desk and checked the register again, trying to find out if a woman had checked in about the same time Chase had. No soap. But then I pulled out the sample of Chase's writing that Everson had given me in New York, and I compared it to Chase's signature on the register. A few wild ideas started chasing themselves around in my brain, ideas that began to fall into a crazy pattern. Item 301260, long-distance phone call to the Home Office of Universal Adjustment in Hartford. I asked Pat McCracken to run an errand for me. Three hours later, he called back from New York City with the answer. Yep, I'd come all the way to Barbados, but the case got solved in New York. I phoned Lola and Everson and asked them to come to the cemetery. Fifteen minutes later, we met at the freshly turned grave. Mr. Dollar, I must say you're not being considerate of Lola. I'm sure you realize that coming back to Tom's grave here is a most painful experience for her. I'm sure you had a good reason, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I wanted both of you to know what a jerk I've been in this investigation. Oh, don't say that. You've done everything that could be done. And I appreciate it. Well, thanks, Lola. But you see, for almost two weeks now, from New York to New Orleans to Barbados here, I've been chasing a dead man. What? I don't understand. I think you understand real well. Now, look here. If this is some kind of a joke, it's in very poor taste. It's no joke. I've got to hand it to you both, though. You engineered the whole deal with just two people. What are you talking about? Drop the act, Lola. The faithful, grieving wife. You had me fooled, but good. Look, Dollar. You told me you took a trip alone about the time Tom was arrested, Lola. Oh, that was true. But it wasn't to Martha's Vineyard. You went down to New Orleans and rented a room under the name of Tom James. You were the other woman I was looking for. That's a lie. You don't know what you're saying, Dollar. Don't I? Freddie Quintana in New Orleans showed me a letter Chase was supposed to have written. It matched the sample of Chase's writing you'd given me in New York, Everson. Well, of course it did. That proves it. It proves that the sample you gave me in New York wasn't Chase's writing. I just checked by long-distance phone. 
You what? Oh, yes. Freddy Quintana played his part real well. But what he didn't know was he was going to get paid off with a bullet. That was the day you turned up in New Orleans, Lola. To kill him and shut his mouth. Dollar. Let him finish, George. Oh, there's not much more. You hired the second guy to pose as your husband and lead me a merry chase. That explains why he didn't kill me and why I was always able to pick up his trail again. I was supposed to. That's the way you were playing it. And all the time, the real Tom Chase was dead. You probably killed him back in New York when he was supposed to have jumped bail and disappeared. Are you through, Dollar? Almost. Except for the money. You are the embezzler, Everson. It was you who juggled the accounts. And after I ran into a dead end down here with a fake chase's death, you and Lola could live happily ever afterward with the dough. Go on. Of course, the fellow you hired to pose as chase didn't realize he was going to get paid off the same way Quintana was. What are you talking about? The way you helped him over that cliff, Everson, to make it look like suicide. How did you know? I probably wouldn't have tumbled to it if I hadn't checked his handwriting. Of course, you can't prove any of this. Like to exhume the body, ship it back to New York, and prove that it isn't the real Tom Chase? The body stays where it is, Dollar. Oh, put that gun down, Everson. They already know most of the story in New York. You're bluffing. Then why don't you call the bluff and find out? I think he's telling the truth, George. In that case? Yes. We'd better take care of him. Not we, Lola. Not anymore. What do you mean? I think we'd better just dissolve the partnership. Don't try anything like that, George. This was our idea together, and you're in it as deep as I am. And that's why I'm leaving, Lola. I wish it had worked out, but as long as it didn't... You can't do that! You've got the money! Exactly. I won't let you! Get back, Lola. We both went for Everson at the same moment. The shot spun her around and crumpled her. I grabbed the gun from Everson. I, I'm... I'm afraid it's not serious, Lola. If his aim had been better, he'd have done you a favor. Judy. One thing I still don't get. Your husband wouldn't make any statement after his arrest. That means to me he knew what you were up to. And he loved you so much he was willing to take the rap. Tell me this, Lola. Why did you marry the poor guy in the first place? Expense account total, $1,723. Lola and Everson were turned over to the authorities, and Everson gave up the key to a safe deposit box in New York where the embezzled money had been all the time. It also showed us the deserted spot on Long Island where he and Lola had hidden the body of the real Tom Chase. Remarks, dear Pat, next time you call me for an assignment like this one, I hope you get a busy signal. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a body suddenly rises from the grave to take the spotlight from a Hollywood star. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Robert Reif. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Michael Ann Barrett, Jack Edwards, Ben Wright, Virginia Gregg, Don Diamond, Forrest Lewis, and Richard Crenna. Musical supervision by Marigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Thank you.